We want our state legislators to vote in favor of the animals, as does our Congressman Chris Gibson in Washington, D.C. When does the Glendora Vegetarian Club meet? We meet the last Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. at the Nassau Free Library, 18 Church, Church Street. On April 29th, we are having vegetarian ham sandwiches on eight grain bread. Stop and think of the life of the cruelty facing a newborn calf, a baby pig, a little turkey, or a tiny chip. Is it right? What does our conscience tell us? Do you really want to be a part of that? Can you ever really be happy and free putting their battered bodies into your mouth? That's pretty profound. This is only one side of it. Think of the harm you are doing to your body. Aha! Uh -huh. Good. Good. Let's re go, Lou. That was great, Valerie. Good taste. Go ahead, Lou. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> 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 okay. Faster. Okay. okay, what did you do for the animals last week? Tony Orlando and I went to Albany for Animal <laughs> Legislation Day. Assemblyman McDonald visited with us and heard us present five bills to help the animals. He was pleasantly responsive. Did Assemblyman McLaughlin see you? <laughs> no, he doesn't come to see us. He sends an assistant. Did the assistant help you? Yes. He talks more than his assistant. Yes, he talks more than he listens, but, but he has three cats. <laughs> Did Senator Marchion see you? No, she never does. She delegates us to an assistant. He listened to the five bills amiably. I do not know if it will help the animals. Glennie made a video. You can see it on YouTube and Facebook and make your own evaluation. Circa 200 people attended, 50 from Manhattan, the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. They came on a big long bus and seemed to be pleased. Also present were the Mohawk, the Hudson Mohawk Humane Society and Animal Federation. At noon, a man rolled in a tail of 16 platters, two feet in diameter, loaded with sandwiches and wraps. They were vegan. Hooray! Not a crumb was left by 1 p.m., that is. All of us will continue helping animals, which in turn helps people. People eat healthy, and it also helps preserve the precious plant. Submitted by Glenn Gore. Thank you, Lou. Oh, oh, that's the great. This is family you know style. You know what? I don't. I forgot to bring a spoon, and my big There's one spoon over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got this spoon. Which right. probably What's use that. It's this one. Oh, it's uh, for Zell. It's it's, it's like a ton of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 we heard that mother thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's for right. It's like Virginia. Okay, no, this is family yeah. style, right? right? You're all family. Yeah. Pass the yeah. plate. Yeah. I will. Now, next we have uh, Tony. You're going to read to us. I will. And uh, let me be the first to say that when that guy wheeled in that cart of food, Glendora was the first one up there. Awesome. Oh, yeah. He just beelined it right there. It's like, ooh, food. All right. <laughs> May, May 14th, 2015. Uh, if you do not eat meat or dairy products, how do you get your protein? Mm -hmm. Nuts have more protein than meat. Soy has more protein than meat. When you eat meat, you are getting your protein second hand. Get your protein first hand. Beans, peas, and lentils are strong in protein. Further, they are all natural and high fiber. They are not cultured in which cancer cells can grow. Even further, they can be easily used as a main course and as meat substitutes and recipes. Delectable recipes using these are abound all over books, internet, and magazines. They are pleasantly filling and keep you from snacks, snacking for four hours. Do you eat veggie burgers? You can make your own veggie burgers. Oats, tofu, onions, George Washington broth, salt, pepper, and herbs. Or you can buy any one of a dozen manufactured veggie burgers in the frozen case of supermarkets and health stores. Other such meat substitutes are veggie hot dogs, chicken, turkey, roast, steaks, tender bits, meatballs, fish, wings, hamburger, ham, pork, sausage, and chili. Uh, the next meeting is on May 26 at 6 p.m. at the Nassau Free Library, uh, 18 Church Street, Route 20. Thank you, Tony. Mm. Yeah. We're at the George. 
I have two things. I'll uh, read one and he'll read one. Yes. You're I got my the last other one thing, here. too. Oh, I got something to read, too. Glendora's yeah. Vegetarian Club, mm -hmm. when's the next meeting? May 27th. I don't have to repeat all that. You just heard it. What are you going to do? Do you want to make a difference? Do you care about animals and want your passion to have a lasting effect? Have you tried and feel perhaps one person just can't make a difference? Think again. Come tonight to learn and explore key animal protection issues locally, nationally, and present practical approaches to working toward the solutions. Learn about current legislation initiatives, initiating humane education, making compassionate choices, and exposure to local animal organizations. Come listen to veteran animal advocate <laughs> Valerie Lang Walden, JD, MLS, as she discusses real world topics and how we can make a difference. Tasty vegetarian refreshments will be provided. Good going, Joyce. Now, folks, <laughs> do you know that October 1st is. Uh, World Vegetarian Day. No, I didn't and know that. Vegetarian. We know it now. Uh, yeah, we do. Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And did you know that October second is International Day of Nonviolence and World Day for Farmed Animals? Oh, oh, I know that. Wow. Yeah. Now, um, let's see. Um, who wants to sing the theme song? <laughs> oh, I can't sing. You do. I'm going to read my little ditty here in a minute. Okay. When you, you do your song first. It'll fit in. I can't sing. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your hearts and let us sing. Just be kind. Stop the cruel. Thou cows and pigs, leave them alone. The horses, ends and turkeys too. Save the fish. Just be kind. One with God. Love to every, love to animals. Just be kind. Oh, good job. Thank you. All right. Thank you, thank you for the animals. Now, does anybody here, any of you children, have any prayers that you want to say? Do you have any prayers for people you want us to say? Any names for prayers? Anybody you want us to pray for? Okay. If you think of something later. Oh, Billy Bob. Billy Bob. Billy Bob again, yes. Billy oh. Bob is still with us, folks. He's uh, Mar Madeline's dog, right, Billy Bob? Oh. Oh. Billy Bob. Oh. Seven, going on 17. Now, the tree uh, down in the village, folks, uh, Valerie's oh, yeah. uh, The tree down in the village, uh, at the center of the village, people want to take it down and put up a clock. So I'm going to pass this petition around, and would you all sign it, please? Valerie's starting it. Tell me, what is this? Brazil. Brazil? Yeah, it's sort of like Brazil, but it's, you know, soaked in oil, vinegar, and there's some oregano, tomatoes, onions. Maddie, there's beans here, but I think it's the same as yours. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Yours is good. I haven't tried it. Last night? Zatarans. Oh, you weren't here last night, though. We'll pass these around. These are meat substitutes. Oh, wow. And uh, just pass them around, look at them. Well, there isn't spoons in here. Speaking of meat substitutes, good. I found the uh, really good veggie like burger, Dollar General. Oh, yeah? It's really? A buck for two patties. Wow. Really good. And it's good, honey? Yeah, it is. There's no egg in it? Did you check? Mm. And now, Douglas. I'm going to read. I want you to read oh, that thing. And, it's I would have to check. You get, get to the part about Maddie. Okay. Yes. I don't think uh, she should promote these. And uh, so Douglas now has something to read us. This is Mr. I'm Douglas sure. Van Ock. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. This is a little bit off the, the topic and your approach, but it has to do with my love of the red meat industry. Yeah. So I wrote an advertisement for one of their people. This is, this is bound to get the Madison Ave. And I write crazy stories, so here goes. Bear with me. This is an advertisement from McGillicuddy's Meat Market, located a few miles outside of Nowheresville. We are in Corral Circle, off of Steer Boulevard, Podunksville, USA. Toll free at 
area code zero 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 then zero 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 <laughs> or at the internet we are at and this case is blankety blank dot com <laughs> we literally love our mad mad cows to death oh, yeah. yes we do beef up concerns for you and only you our customers we don't give you a bum steer. Oh, we strive for excellence when we boast. Ready, folks? You, and only you, the customer gets trimmed. <laughs> the water's behind you, is it? Anybody is welcome water. Oh. Over here, take them home. Look at this baby. Ah. I gotta remember to take this back. Wow. Joyce. What? Look at this cookbook. Oh, this is, wait a minute, I'm signing a petition. <laughs> Thank God, woman. Hi! <laughs> can you join the, can you put a little folding chair so she can be with her peers? See the little folding chair? There's one in the back here. There's one in the chair back here. So, we can take this one. Yeah, this is great. Uh, anybody want this cookbook? Yes. Help yourself. Okay. Oh, and now, uh, 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 you've had those for a while. I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> These are all giveaways by the library. Where are you guys going? Um, we're just going to have a meeting for this movie. We're having a meeting? No, yeah, You're, no not until our speaker goes. Yes, and I lost the taste of them. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do fresh. Yeah. Did you she sign this yet? Uh, Madeline, we read one page of this book. Did you please. sign this yet? No, I didn't. Thought. Powerful vegan thought. And then we're going to have our speaker. Time, I guess I can. Okay. Any page? Or? Mm. How do you know? What are you girls going to tell us about smoothies? Um, well, we were going to make them, but someone did. But you did. You were what? It was my grandmother's fault. Who's um, the speaker for this group of girls? Lily. Me? No, uh uh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do about smoothies? We we're, were going to make a smoothie, but um, anonymous didn't anonymous. bring the. Someone okay. didn't bring the. Next, next time? Oh. Next oh. time? Yeah. We'll, try to, we'll try to get you a chair. Okay. We love smoothies. Do you have enough to eat, girls? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just as soon as Madeline reads us half a page here of Powerful Vegan Thoughts, we're going to have our speaker, and then you girls okay. can have your meeting. I'm going to read to you about Marsha Claire Pearson. Founded Seattle's first vegetarian group, the Seattle Vegetarian Society, in 1976. In the mid 1980s, it merged into the largest Seattle Earth Save group. Now, the local group is Vegetarianism, Vegetarians of Washington, which puts on events. Marsha's Fashion with Compassion evolved out of her association with AVS, which is uh, Anti Vivisection mm -hmm. Society. Um, and it's now her registered trademark to be used for vegan events. From 1977, good year, until the information became available online around 2000, she provided a, compreh a comprehensive list of products that were both non-animal, meaning no animal ingredients, and cruelty-free, not tested on animals. Her column in Ahimsa, the compassionate consumer, for years told people all the wonderful new products to enhance the vegan lifestyle such as clothes and shoes. She also wrote a question and answer column called The Glow of Beauty for almost two decades in Nutritional Health Review, the Consumer's Medical Journal. She was a professional model of only wholesome products and purposes from 1973 until becoming a mother in 1984. Marsha's two daughters, vegan since birth, are Tahira, born in 1984, and Kira Ina, born in 1987 who loved conferences because Jay did the bunny dance with them. <laughs> Jay puts his hands vertically on his head for rabbit ears and hopped, which attracted people to dance. Oh, thank you, man. Now, our speaker, would you, Valerie, tell us, uh, start, would you like us to introduce you or could you just tell us? I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Yeah, stand uh, up, honey. Okay, all right. Hi. Right over here, honey. Yeah, where do you want me? Over, right over there? Yeah. Okay, okay, this is exciting. Um, what a nice group. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, I am Valerie Lang, and my married name is Walden. My animal name is Lang. <laughs> but after I got married, um, I have to remember to keep my married name. So, I, um, guys, I'm a 
librarian full time at Hudson Valley Community College, but I'm also a lawyer. And I've always loved animals, um, but when I was a young kid, like your age, guys, it to, if you loved animals, there weren't many options. Um, you become a veterinarian, maybe. That's different now. As my life continued, I went and got my master's in library science and a law degree, and I was a law librarian for quite a while. Places like Yale Law School, AT&T, some, wow. some really big name places, and you know, all this exciting stuff. But my love for animals would not go away. So, when I came home to uh, upstate New York, after being uh, living in Miami and North Carolina and Connecticut and various places, New Jersey, I got my job at Hudson Valley as a librarian, but I also realized, guys, that there was a need for animal education, animal law education, animal advocacy education. What I did was I started surfing the internet, and I looked at like uh, law schools that um, were teaching animal law, and I said, okay, I can do this, I can do this. And I approached the department chair about starting an animal law uh, program at Hudson Valley and one course led to an entire program maybe some of you guys have heard of Bob Barker he offered the college a million dollars for the study of animal advocacy um, the college got a little scared and sort of uh, backed off on the animal advocacy part of it which was disappointing um, and went to animal policy but this is okay because it's still a step in the right direction I'm, I have a very big vision of animal advocacy, I'm, I'm, as you will see in my presentation. But these were good old boys that were a little bit uh, reluctant to, to get on board. So Bob Barker was not happy. He took his money back. Uh, it's true. It's true. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nevertheless, as the years have gone on, they've come to realize that you need to do animal advocacy. People aren't interested in animal policy and uh, the dry stuff. They want. They love animals. So that's where, where I am now is I'm a librarian full time, but I'm going to be teaching um, online. And I, I encourage any of you to feel free to take the course, but after tonight, stay in touch with me. Hi. Uh, and nice to see you. So, hi. 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 How are you? Well, we're actually from uh, the Berkshires. Um, so, oh. my name is uh, Shwila. You're from Berkeley, oh. what? Well, Berkeley. She signed up. You're my Oh, you're telling me. That's awesome. Okay, nice to meet you. You can take are, my seat, too. Oh. Uh, my name is Karen. Oh, Karen? Okay. And this is Val. Tell Valerie, tell us again who you are, just for these two. Well, I, I am a, I, I'm a, I'm a librarian, I'm a lawyer, I'm an animal law professor. I helped start an animal advocacy program at Hudson Valley Community College with Bob Barker. Um, and I've been really, you know, I'm, I'm pretty intense. <laughs> well, where, are no. you, where are you from? Where are I'm you from Avery Park, Glass Lake. Where, this is where New York State is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Now, folks, you can okay. sit right over there if okay. you want. Okay. Okay. And, and now Valerie can resume? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, that, I was pretty much with my story. introduction. Oh, yeah. oh all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, you can go. Keep going. Okay. Karen, and then Karen. Um, okay. Well, um, <laughs> you should all, before I begin my presentation, <laughs> and what I do is I have a PowerPoint, so I'll somehow need to squeeze over there. Okay. 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 But everyone should have a handout. Uh, pull um, there. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to take any Please join us space. for Animal Advocacy Day. Um, so if you all have a handout, and if you don't, there are plenty right up here. Um, everyone should have a handout on the New York Animal Cruelty Law key provisions. I'm going to give you guys some tips on what to do because you can do things. The New York State Humane Association's priority bills for legislation for animals. We're getting down to the end of the semester session, and there are some bills that actually stand a chance of passing. I'd like you to know what they are. Who are you going to call? That's the other handout. And so I'll, I'll get to this uh, toward the end of my presentation as to calling your representatives. But um, what I've done is I've prepared a couple of different PowerPoints. I'll, I'll try to keep it fairly brief, but... Um, yeah. I'll probably be in front of you about an hour, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. So um, that's good. All right. So do I? Can I go over there? Uh, is that where I to run the PowerPoint? Because I'm not sure. Yes, whatever you say. <laughs> yeah. Can you sure. run the PowerPoint? Oh, thank you. Uh, that's okay. I, that's fine. Tony. Well, I, I can do it. Valerie, would you like to sit there. here? Is, well, am I in your way? You know what? It would be what I'm going to try. Oh, I can. Move. I'm a stander. I prefer to stand. 
Oh, thank right you. With you guys. I'm going to move anyhow so I can see you. <laughs> I'm going to uh, go back over here. Is there more silverware, Tony? I bought yeah, a whole bag of it last thank time. Thank you. There's a whole bag of it. Thank you. You're welcome. So let's do this. And would you like a glass of uh, water? Okay. No, I think I'm okay. Do you want a sandwich? We have sandwich. Oh, yeah. Oh, sandwich no, water. thank you. This is perfect. Okay. This is. Do you have a fork yeah. there? Oh, here's a. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. Yeah, there's silverware in there. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so again, I'm, I'm not here to tell you how great I am or anything, and right. that's not the purpose of it, but I am to tell you that one person can make a difference. But ultimately, it's all also about working together. So what I'm going to do tonight is just give you guys, in my experience, I've been doing this 15 years, I've uh, got great contacts, and I, I, I guess I am a veteran. I've been doing this a while now. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of the issues as, as I see them as an educator and an animal advocate. I'm also going to give you um, a brief overview of New York State animal cruelty law and what you guys can do if you spot animal cruelty. It's, it's happening under our noses. We need to know what to do. Um, and then I'm going to wrap up with the bills that are currently being um, considered by the New York State Legislature that would work on behalf of animals. Which ones stand a chance, which ones are going to be probably put on the back burner till next session. Okay guys? So, um, oh, so I'm going to move you. along here. Let's see. That's my cat. Okay, that's Hello, important. Kitty. And uh, let's just get moving here. So, everyone I know loves this if they're animal folks. Every 100 years from now it won't matter. I want my bank account, blah blah blah. What matters is that I did something for animals. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you something. People care about animals. We, that we care about animals. We are not a minority anymore. Um, 2006, the Duke University School of Law Conference Dean says, future generations will look back at our treatment of animals with shame. This is almost 10 years ago. The time is right for dramatic changes. Okay? The future is not so far off. I made this PowerPoint, and, uh, and I, you know, it's my heart's in it. There will be a couple of disturbing slides, but that's why we're here. We care. Um, Peter Singer, awesome man. He's going to be, his textbook, classic. Uh, you know, many of us were born before 1975. The animal protection movement is still very new. We need to keep that in mind. Uh, we all want more progress, but it, it really it started waking people up with Pete Singer's book. Um, on animal liberation, and whoa, lo and behold, people actually feel pain, or animals feel pain. Um, what a concept. I mean, it just was not understood in the 50s and 60s, not, not at all. And that's not so long ago. Um, then PETA, say what you will about PETA, but the Silver Spring Monkey case gave uh, a lot of uh, uh, exposure to the fact that animals in experimentation were treated very cruelly. And this was 1981. I mean, again, I was, what, 20, I guess, at the time. And, and now this is, is commonplace information that we know this now. But it's not so long ago. We were just learning these things. Look at this. Summer of 1990, the March on Animals, 10,000 people. This, uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm showing you this is a new movement, and we need to stay positive because it is new. The first animal law school class took place at Harvard in 1999, right? keeping these things into perspective. Hello, animal law. Now it's in about 150 law schools. These are active hypertext links. I can certainly send Glendora the, or Tony. Uh, I taught Tony. Tony was in my, my non-credit class. I, I can send you guys the PowerPoint if you're interested in this. I'm not going to you know, jump off to the actual law schools, but they're there if you want to see them. There are undergraduate studies. There are animal law reviews. There are attorneys now in private practice. I was hoping the young girls could could see this because mm -hmm. uh, you know they, they have a lot of options at, the, at their age. Yes, All yes. folks like us are, <laughs> you know, I, I'm a full time librarian, but my, my full time passion is animals, and you can find a way if you have to make pay the bills otherwise, you know. But there are students who are young and they can do these things now, and I'm really encouraged to see young people getting involved. Bob Barker. Um, has actually given um, a million, millions of dollars to study of law at the law school level. He started the Drury University Forum on Animal Rights, which I actually helped start. I flew out there and consulted with their faculty. 
and this is the animal outreach, uh, the animal policy certificate, which is a credit bearing 27 credit certificate offered at Hudson Valley, which I'll get into in a couple of minutes. But I'm just showing you now that you know it's happening. This is the first community college in the country with an animal policy program. It's an unusual topic, and again, I think I'm among friends here. Um, but it's it, you know it can be offensive to some people. Um, it's it's emotional and it's hard to teach because I get all kinds of people in a classroom. In this room, or in any classroom I'm in, I may have hunters, I, meat eaters, you know, um, and it's it's difficult to answer to everybody. The point is is that you can't teach this kind of stuff and and not have an opinion. So I have an opinion. I am who I am. I hope you guys will accept me. I, uh, I also do feel, and I'm not going to immerse you in gruesome pictures and videos tonight, but I also do firmly believe, and I've seen this over the years, that reading 20 pages about the fur industry pales in comparison to actually seeing a video. I know that what turned me into a passionate animal advocate was seeing the suffering. And you don't have to see it over and over, but if you see it, you're changed. And I firmly believe that. Um, so, the challenges we have, people like myself, lawyers, but there are lawyers who work for big business, for medical, for the Farm Bureau, for the clothing industry, criminal defense lawyers in general. I mean, we have some real challenges. Um, lack of protection for farm animals. In the United States, we're way behind the European Union. Um, it's truly incredible that uh, we don't have the protection for farm animals in this country. Um, but we are making strides, which I'll get to. Other challenges include, um, and again, I do emphasize this, and this is a vegetarian vegan club, we, we care about farm animals and more protection is without a doubt needed, and we'll, we'll move along. Um, gestation crates. Other challenges are, you've probably heard of hoarders, um, city ordinances don't deal with these, it's becoming an epidemic, people accumulating more animals than they can um, care for, uneducated police, district attorneys, people who just don't know, guys. This is changing, thanks to a group I'm going to tell you about, and the animal law programs at schools. And then people who think animal rights activists are wacko. We have our challenges, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you guys are needed, all of you, um, to educate and be educated. And then I just wrap this up by saying, every one of you, you, you may be a cowboy, you may be a mom, you may be a who, I don't know who's in this room, but all of you need some basic guidance and training. So that's what you're going to get here. So making a difference, um, and I just, I like to say that if animals are your thing, and I would stress this with the young kids, don't listen to it. Don't get stuck in a desk job if, if you're meant to do something else, but if you are in that desk job, like me, you can still do something. Um, there's something for everybody when it comes to animal advocacy. The, the theme of this is what one person can do, but I also believe that it's important to work together. So I'm going to cover both of that, working together and what one person can do. Okay? I like visuals, as you guys can see. Um, here are the issues. Okay? So let's, let's get to the ugly part, and then we'll move on. This is a sign, it might have been Tony or uh, it was somebody else, I'm not sure, but I saw this on Facebook and it, it's true. Something is so horrible we can't stand to look at it, maybe we shouldn't be tolerating it. Oh, right. It. All right, mm. that's a pretty cool sign. Mm. And I, I've, I've done this a long time and what I really still have a problem with, and I try to be gentle and understanding, but people who, I can't, I can't. Well, just do it once, just maybe. Just maybe once, look. Look at what the animals endure with their bodies. So I'm just going to go through this quickly. Um, and it's not everything. This is kind of mild, actually. <clears throat> and I just write ignorance is not bliss because the animals can't tell us. There are dumb people out there. Maybe they are lazy, but this is against the law. Okay? These are actual cases. We can't get inside their minds why people do these things, but we have a good idea. <clears throat> it's up to us to make them accountable. This is Buster from Buster's Law in the hospital. I'm not showing you his injuries. He's lying on the bed. His uh, owner is one person, Nancy Bonesteel. I am only one. I am still one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. Because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something I can do. That's all of us. Because of Nancy Bonesteel's resolve, there is now Buster's Law. Okay? Um, so one person can absolutely make a difference, and we all are responsible. Uh, the animal cruelty laws need to be made stronger. This here is, is not a felony in New York State. What is it? it it's a duck impaled with nails. 
with nails through his beak and through his eyes. He survived, okay? He's been taken care of, but this should be a felony. And was that local? Yes, here? this was local. Really? So in New York, you just said that's not a felony. No, it's oh, a misdemeanor. Jesus. Animal fighting is a felony. And this isn't just about pit bulls and ugly, mean dogs uh, fighting. This is a, a brutal blood, blood, it's not a sport, it's a blood activity. Um, and in New York State, it's a felony. And fortunately, it's in a felony in every state now, dog fighting. Cock fighting is still accepted in some parts of the country. Um, we've got an epidemic in this area of dog fighting. I'm going to give you guys the law and what you can do. I'm, this is also going to be inspiring, but it's sobering. I'm sorry. That's why I do it. <laughs> um, the link between animal cruelty and, and uh, serial killers and, and the, the link is now irrefutable. Just last month, the FBI verified that they've bumped animal cruelty, heinous crimes up to a tier one level. You may know that. Um, it's a great thing. It's a great step. So we're, we're starting to realize. For me, it's more than um, affecting humans. I mean, people will say it's a bridge crime. It hurts humans. Well, for me, it's, it's, it is about the animals. But if, it's, if we have to get to people by saying it hurts people, However it gets done, okay? Animal hoarders. Um, not everyone is purposely cruel, but it's still cruel. And this is still against the law, okay? Am I upsetting Glendora? No, she's just not going to look at it. It's okay. okay. <laughs> she's okay. Okay. All right, right, Glendora? <laughs> okay. okay. Um, you know that you don't buy from pet stores. And horse oh, slaughter. Geez, We've got some bills. Crazy. This is bad, but the horse racing industry is needs to be exposed for what it is. And horse slaughter is a direct result of horse racing. And I'm, I'm going to get to this, guys. Fur industry, they need their fur more than we do. Need I say more? You guys probably know this. Don't be fooled by the factory farming industry. Um, here's a quote by Robert Kennedy. Few of us can work to change the, the course of history, but we can change small portion of events. Every choice you make, what you purchase, matters. Don't support factory farmed products. Your voice matters. And I've seen this in 15 years. Um, you know, when I was, before I became aware, I always thought, well, somebody else is taking care of it. You know, the police, undercover guys, the, the bad guys are being exposed. That's not the case. We all need to have a role in this. The police need our help. Um, if, if This is a website. This is the only pet abuse database website that I know of that is international now. This was started by Allison Giannato a few, about 15 years ago. Her cat was killed in a heinous manner, and she took her, her, her passion and made this website that now encompasses more than pets. It's every animal, and it's every form of cruelty, and it's a wonderful database, and it keeps people aware of just the extent and the outcome of court cases. I just have to encourage you all, you know, I've learned the hard way. you got to take time out. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. None of us is going gonna, is gonna to change at all. I, I burned out really bad a few years ago, and you just have to realize that you do the best you can. We all have a role, you know, but don't kill yourself. But after tonight, when you guys are walking down the street or driving, you're going to know more in terms of what to do about animal cruelty in New York State and what legislation has a real chance of passing than the average person, than most police officers, in fact. Now, what, what was that documentary that you flashed up there before? I'm just trying to make a few notes. Oh. Um, that was like, um, it was, probably, was it Earthling? It was oh, Dealing Dogs. Dealing Dogs. Dealing, com. Yeah. Dealing Dogs. I Dealing can dogs. send you this. You know what I've got, guys? I've got a sign-up sheet. I'm happy to send okay. any of you this okay. PowerPoint. Okay. 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 This presentation? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Share the wealth. <laughs> good, because I was going to ask that. that. I was going to yeah. ask you, can you? Yeah. Oh, wait till you see. Wait till you see. Great. Yeah, this Great. is really, I know. It's like, ah. all right. Working in a library has its benefits. Okay. <laughs> so this, we're not just about cats and dogs. Depends on what library. Okay. Not Dalton. Um, <laughs> oh. Now, this is about animal experimentation. Again, these, these are unpleasant, but it's certainly not the worst of it. But it's 2015. It's time. There are other methods of getting where we need to be. Um, and when you really read about animal testing and experimentation, it, it, it's such a small amount of anything for animals has ever, let me go back, sorry, come through from that. Um, I, I just showed, oops, sorry, um, here I go, hold on. Um, okay, we're almost done with the gruesome stuff. We're going to get happy in a minute, I promise. But. Um, 
lots of strides lately in the in the in the area of circus elephants. You probably heard Ringling is phasing out. That's an amazing accomplishment. We that was a huge day for animal advocates. You wouldn't no one would have saw this coming. You, things are not impossible. And I, I know a person personally, you'll see a picture of her at a protest with a bull hook. Wonderful, gentle lady. But you know, kids have gotten involved. When kids know what goes on with these animals, they want the change, you know? We're in a good port where change can happen. Um, these pictures really affect kids when they go to the circus. They, Mommy, I don't want to do that. I don't want to support that. And then, of course, you all know about factory farming. This is standard industry practice. Male chicks are discarded, battery cages, downed animals, the whole nine yards. And, and mm -hmm. you know, but you Insanity. see, if it doesn't change people's choices, I, I don't know what will. Um, more education. Again, get your animals spayed. My, my motto, again, think globally, act locally. So these are some of the issues. I mean, I've, I've gone through some really, very quickly, everything from circus to uh, animals and experimentation to our companion animals to animal fighting. I, I've hit on some really nasty topics. Finally, I just also want to say, it, this says kids learn what they live, question authority. Just because it's been done in the past doesn't mean it needs to continue. Um, and then finally, maybe you'll look at things differently after tonight. I think I'm among like thinkers in this group. Um, I've come across some people who were resistant to my presentations, but but when most people know what goes on, they, they do look at things differently. And that was the Hallmark case that made the news a few years back, um, the, the school lunch program. The animals are ready and they have been, and we better not let them down. Finally, I'm, if any of has anyone seen this? Okay. Was it life changing? Well, I, I mean, I, I've been in the movement for a long time. Okay. Because, you know, okay. This yeah, this is life changing for many people, and it's about if you have a chance, the the documentary is available online. It's narrated by Joaquin Phoenix. It was made in 2009, I think, and it's it's a, a very very well done um, documentary about our relations with animals in terms of animals and science, animals for food, animals for entertainment, and companion animals. Um, very eye-opening. A lot of people don't want to see this, but it's a must. I feel. I, it, um, okay, so let's let's get happy. And um, we've been here before. And this is these are dogs Asia. over overseas. We, we've been here before, and I say that we've been here before. <coughs> Some people compare our treatment of animals to the Holocaust. I think that's a fair assessment. I do. Mm -hmm. We've been here before. We will get through this. Um, 2014 animal victories. Just take a look at some of the progress that's been made. This uh, this is awesome stuff. Lots of progress. 2014. People care. We need more educated citizens in law enforcement, animal control, police. Welcome your help uh, if you know the law. <clears throat> Most people are good. <laughs> Most people are good. So let's keep that in mind. And and it's hard not to get angry, but. Um, being angry when you're trying to make your point rarely gets anywhere in animal advocacy, I've found. Just facts. You're less effective. Facts, right. 10, 20 years ago, Michael Vick never would have seen a jail cell. This was an amazing um, step forward. He, he, while it was a horrendous thing he did, he brought a lot of awareness to the movement. Um, and then you've got Tom Brady and his spoiled dog. Yeah, yeah. No, you've got you've got the you've got the internet, social media. You've got celebrities now getting on board with animal topics. Um, this is the witness. This is about fur. A great great documentary by Tribe of Heart. Beautiful movie. Um, Eddie Lama, just a regular guy who got a cat. He used to smoke three packs a day, cigarettes, and just seeing the animal just made him a gentle spirit. Um, great great documentary. Hey girls, you joining us now? We got the smoothies. Oh, sorry, my mom had to go oh, and bring it. Start the over. Oh wow. <laughs> well, maybe after the presentation we can have smoothies. Okay. Okay. I'll just keep going. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now we're getting to some international, national look. Animal Defenders International. I mean, I'm not here to say donate your money. I'm not here to say that. But one of the things I have learned is organizations. Why reinvent the wheel if there's an organization that is doing what you're already passionate about? These are about animals and circuses. Um, so for whatever your passion may be or your concern, there's an organization that, at least one, that 
answers to it, um, and they're wonderful. Um, internationally, um, you've got the Cove, which is about the, um, the slaughter of dolphins for, um, in Japan, um, as soup sold as food. Th this is, um, this is a, a wonderfully enlightening documentary. Um, I'm going to be teaching it in my class, and I'll show you that in a sec. I'm not going to show you the documentary, but um, let's see what else. Okay. Internationally, you've got soy dogs saving dogs. Um, dogs in China obviously don't have the life that dogs in the United States do. But internationally, whatever the issue is, there is an organization that you can you can support. Nationally, we've got many. Again, Glendora read some off the Anti Vivisection Society. Um, I love this one, Animal Legal Defense Fund. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal bunch mm -hmm. of lawyers who love animals who take their their legal expertise and offer it in lawsuits, and they make change. They absolutely make change. Um, this is, say what you will about the Humane Society, that it's not, they, have, they have haters out there, but in my experience, they are the single biggest organization in our country that affects legislation federally. Um, they're very effective with their new leader, Wayne Passell. Um, the King Amendment, let me back up on this, guys. Um, have any of you heard of the King Amendment? This was a real threat about a year ago, a disaster that didn't happen. People, the people were heard. This amendment would have taken state animal protection laws. It was proposed by a, a redneck in, in uh, I don't know, Iowa, his name was. And what it would have done is it would have watered down state animal laws protecting animals in the name of commerce so that all the protections we have made over 50 years in animal protection would have been wiped out. It was the most terrifying point in my experience with animal. People got on the phone, they met with their legislators, Congressman Gibson, they wrote the Washington paper, Post papers did articles, people, just people like us just said this can't happen and it was defeated. Mm -hmm. And it's just one more example, when people are heard, um, we're the voters, we're the ones that put these guys in office and we're the ones they need to answer to. And this was a perfect example. And the ag gag laws. Mm -hmm. That's another one. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened in North Carolina yet. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yet. We've got yet. Facebook now. I mean, these things are evolving. This is, I'm trying to show you progress, is what I'm getting at. This is a stop puppy mill. The ASPCA, they're awesome. They are. They're, they're, they're really good in terms of um, getting the word out. For, but if you're, if you're a hardcore animal person, if you've been in it a while, you know that um, they're, they're good, they're educational, they're good for people who are just starting with the animal movement, I would say. Um, very, yeah, I mean, I think they all have their place. And it they all have their place. They have and it reaches the wide variety. They absolutely do. Randy Lockwood is with them, and he, he does a brilliant presentation on the link between animal, he's, he's been all over the world, and you know, so all of, there's a place everywhere, yes. Locally, I don't know if you guys knew, the Rensselaer County Humane Society, we're in Rensselaer County here, most of us assume that Mohawk Hudson is our animal shelter, but a few years ago, some of us got together and started this animal shelter. So support them, and I, and I don't mean throw money. Oh, if you have it, great. But support them. They 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 need volunteers. These are things that you can do. Um, there, Lynn Torello from Pineview Kennels has has worked very hard with this. So locally, we've got these organizations, and I just want to point out a couple. The other is out of the pits. This does great education with pit bulls. Um, Sydney Cross uh, has is just just great work. It's just amazing um, rescuing. Yes, guys, talk to me. Um, sorry, but no. on Friday we actually did a big fundraiser in our school for out of the pits. You did. Yeah. I love <laughs> out of the pits. Yeah, they're coming. Do you know Friday. that one in eight hundred pit bulls gets adopted? Yeah. <laughs> One in 800. It's because of the rumors about them being That's mean. correct. Yeah. I wish you girls could have seen the earlier part of my presentation. I'm, I want your emails and I'm going to send it to you. Okay. Because you're our future, okay? Yeah. I mean it. <laughs> All right. Uh, out of the pits. Catskill Animal Sanctuary, farm animals. Uh, Kathy Stevens just spoke at Hudson Valley. Absolutely paradise on earth. Uh, this is a great one I want you to be aware of. The New York State Humane Association, they actually train police officers in animal cruelty law. Uh, investigation and I'm just going to give you some tips on what they tell police so that you can take some basics with you when you leave here. Um, tell me, what time is it anyone? How, how are we doing? 10 up 7. Okay. okay. Alright. 
more progress. Attorney General Schneiderman, Animal Protection Initiative, where he <coughs> Uh, he aims at uh, enforcing the puppy mill law and um, the pet lemon law and using civil and criminal remedies to target allegations of animal cruelty. So here's the thing. The, the Attorney General's getting on board. It's progress. It's not all ironed out in stone. I was talking with somebody at the Attorney General office who said, you know, now I realize when we have these big seizures where we have to take in 30 horses, there's no money. So that's the next thing that's needed. The Attorney General's office is now realizing the gross disconnect between the need for, for support for animal advocacy and rescues and, and the reality that, that they're supposed to enforce the law, but what do you do? Where's the money come from? Funding. The state has the money. The state has, New York State has the money. We have the tax, we have the money. Um, and I'll get to that in a second, what we proposed, and there's actually a bill. So what I'm getting at is, this is all happening very quickly, and it's very positive. Um, the Attorney General getting on board. District Attorney Suarez uh, Soares announces an animal abuse task force. Okay, this was good. Working together with Bill Bill of the ASPCA, Brad Shear of Mohawk Hudson, Michelle Crowley's a cop in Albany. Phenomenal, vegan by the way she is. Um, Joel Abelov, Rensselaer County DA. Uh, he prosecuted Buster's Law for the first time. He was the very first prosecutor of Buster's Law in New York State. Personal friend of mine was elected district attorney. If we have animal cruelty in, the, in Rensselaer County, we know that that's going to be handled according to the law effectively. That's a huge, wonderful thing locally. Wonderful. Um, okay. Never doubt. Okay. 2015, the year for the elephant, um, Ringling Brothers. Uh, doing away with elephants and circuses. This is my friend Donna Reynolds, who very respectfully has gone year after year to the, t uh, the circus to uh, participate a couple of years ago, Amrit, and the crowds have just doubled over the years. It's, an it's exhilarating that kids are interested in this too. Kids don't want to patronize the circus when they see this kind of truth. And yeah, it this, is true. This year we had the most on opening night. <sighs> I was working. But, uh, you know. uh, um, so yeah, Cowspiracy. Mm -hmm. um, movies coming out. We had Cowspiracy. It's, uh, as you know, it's about the impact of a, 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 an animal-based diet on the environment, how it's absolutely mathematically unsustainable. We cannot continue this. This planet's wearing out. This, and people don't want to hear it. And, and this movie is brilliant. It's just outrageous. It's not graphic. It should be in a science class. Why can't we get this on PBS um, across the country? Here I'm going to suggest a few things. Just, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to, when it comes just to exploring human the realm of possibilities, yeah. like what if and why yeah. not? Yeah. Well, you, request it. you have to start. You can request it, I think. Mm -hmm. I've got the license for it. We showed it at Hudson Valley. Um, but I think it's so well done that that could be done in a classroom, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a brilliant movie. It is. Um, Balances humor with... There are answers if we look for them, or better, create them. Peaceable Kingdom. It was the old version. Yeah, that's the old version. Right, right. <laughs> Albany Walk for Farm Animals from the Farm Sanctuary. This is every uh, late summer, early mm -hmm. fall. Uh, this is last year's this is the Crossings and Colony. We raise money. We raise awareness. We're hoping at some point to do it down the streets of Albany uh, for more exposure because the news media doesn't catch this in the crossings, but it's still progress. You've got to, you've got to take the progress. And you can find this right on the web if you Google it. Um, wonderful stuff. Siena College is doing something similar. I can't remember the name of it, but I did post it mm -hmm. up in the meetup group. That's Once you, I, you just realize that the animal movement is no longer, <laughs> we're not in the minority anymore. Everyone, not everyone, I shouldn't say, mm -hmm. but the majority of people and voters are waking up. Animal policy certificate. This is at Hudson Valley. This is actually a, tw who, who would imagine? You girls, you might be interested in this. You can um, get academic credit for taking animal courses, animal law, animal protection, forensic investigation of animal cruelty, shelter management. Um, this, this is the certificate that I, I basically created um, with Bob Barker's blessings. Um, and it was called animal advocacy at first. It, um, but they got a little nervous in administration and they thought, oh, there's too much too soon. 
now they're realizing people want advocacy. They, so it's, but the point is, it's still progress. It says it right here, Hudson Valley is the only community college in the nation offering this type of academic certificate program. So is it specific to New York State, or is it, is it it's, broader? It's broader. Okay. It's broader. And I'll be teaching an online course um, in the fall, online, that you could take if you're in California, and it will be... I'm sorry? Yeah. Is it well populated? I mean, do you get a lot of students? I, we were turning people away when it was animal advocacy. It's gone down since they changed it to policy, and I walked away for a couple of years because my go? ego was hurt. Can these children go? They, uh, they it's an can, actual college course, right? Yes. Can yes. Lily go? Hi. You're <laughs> too young, I think. You're, if you're college age, you could enroll, um, but you can go in the future. <laughs> and I encourage that because people with this degree can go into public administration, there's any number of things you can do. There are jobs if you care about animals, and you don't have to be a veterinarian. Is it, a, is it part of an associates, or it's 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 part of the public administration associates, okay. mm -hmm. and and it's a certificate unto itself. So there are jobs where, if you look, that you could say, I've got this animal advocacy <coughs> certificate. I did this internship or animal policy rather, that would give you a leg up as an applicant. But it is part of an associates. Valerie. I want to know the intentions of our children. You're going to. What are you going to make for us? Considering this is vegan club, we're making fruit smoothies. Very good choice. Oh. When are they going to do that, Valerie? When are going to take me to Okay. Um, <laughs> when are they going to do that, Valerie? I'm going to just be a few more minutes on this, and then I was going to talk about New York cruelty law. Whatever you guys want to no do rest. is fine with me. No when did you want to do it, children? Children. No. Really feels like it. When, when, before she starts on New York cruelty law? Uh, if you guys want to. What do you guys want? I'm, I'm, what do you guys want? It's totally. What do you got a blender you got to use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it might be a little. Yeah, yeah try talking. Okay, I'm going to. I'll, I'll, I'll move quickly. I, I'll, I'll finish it no, up. Okay. In this. Well, we have a good 45, 50 minutes okay. left. I also oh, want to know about cool. our new people from Berkshire. We, we want to know about you. No. <laughs> well, uh, basically, I mean, uh, just briefly, I have um, a group called Berkshire Voters for Animals, so we do legislation pieces, and that, I've just had that, that in the last, mm -hmm. I guess, year and a half or so. Berkshire like, Voters so for that's Animals. Awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. phenomenal. So it's based on yep. know, sort of Julie Lewin's book. Yes! Yes. Yes. Is that like the League of Humane Voters, sort of similar to that? Or? No, I mean, it's, it's just really, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Julie Lewin's book, who wrote Get Political for Animals and Win the Laws and Win. So it's basically you know, having that political focus. Yeah, that's so why I kind of yeah. feel strongly with Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that's what we're doing. And our other Berkshire person. Hi there. Yes, I too. I'm basically um, a neophyte. I'm following on Streetless lead here, but I'm just absorbing. You know, just going online, absorbing information, Networking. signing many, many hours yeah. of petitions, yeah. and yeah. you know, uh, rendering support. But right now, yeah. I'm just getting an education That's and exploring the realm of possibilities, like how I can be more effective. And this is a website supporting. that I created. It's the um, Animal Law and Policy. It's got everything from animals for clothing to uh, model animal protection laws, negligence. This is a very, very in-depth college site that gets a lot of hits and that I will happily send to you. It's got PowerPoints, it's got videos, it's got great information in here that I'm constantly working on, okay? And investigating animal cruelty, uh, factory farming, the cat crisis, earthlings, humane education. So I'd like to, when I'm done, just make sure I've got whoever's interested, um, your name. The Animal Outreach Club, again, the beauty of Facebook. Um, so the, all these are options. Your, let your passion drive you. Julie Lewin's book, Get, Get Political for Animals, which I'm, I'm going to segue into this in just a minute. Um, every year, the Humane Society of the United States has Humane Lobby Day here. This past year, it was in March, um, every year. And that's another good networking opportunity to talk with legislators and push for legislation. Coming up on your handout, you've got Animal Advocacy Day. This is next Wednesday, June 3rd. Um, there are some bills we're going to be working on, um, and this is uh, our, our group has really expanded very well, so I, I, I encourage you. Yes, this is going. Animal Advocacy, that's uh, Jim Tedisco, or there's Steve Cap. there's me. Doesn't look like they're wearing eagles on their heads. Oh. Um, it's not, it's a flag in the background. <laughs> but these are some serious movers and shakers in animal protection circles, and you know. Valerie, you want everybody's name, number, and what? 
she's got. Just an email. Just an email. Name, an email, or a telephone number? If that, yes, an I'll email. I'll pass this okay. around. So she's oh, got she's a got board. Yeah. She's got it already. Okay. I, um, I think last they announced there was like either 25 or 30 different animal yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna yes, it's, yeah. there's gonna be, and there's animals running around, it's beautiful. Um, okay, there's a listserv, if you're interested, that Julie maintains with Steve Caparizzo and Jim Tedisco and all of us, and we know about cases that are coming up, which brings me to the, Tony was interested in possibly forming a court advocacy program. They have one in Nassau County where advocates uh, know when there's a case going before a court, and they appear and they know the law and they are speaking on behalf of the animals, their presence, they may not speak, but they're there to advocate for the animals. And Tony had a great idea about doing something like that and this is the kind of group that would be helpful in that, but here's the one thing that we all do, we spread ourselves very thinly. I would like to do that advocacy program, but I'm teaching, so I, I can't do that just yet. But if anyone is interested in in joining this list and or working with Tony on getting a court advocacy program, the power of networking, it needs to be done in, in this area. Did you read what's below that? Did you see what the article is? Uh, it was the owner of a euthanized pit bull admits to leaving the starving dog and tied to an attic pole, he will get probation. That's a pretty shitty, wow. excuse my language. Mm -hmm. I know, I, um, I'm reading that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, that's where, but you, you see an, an amazing disparity of animal cruelty cases and the punishments. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I want to keep... Oops, sorry. Okay. Um, da -da -da -da. Hang on, kids. Okay. Um, how many of you went to public school or go to public school? Did you know <laughs> that if your school uh, is supported by public funds, humane education is mandatory? Oh, and that, that is huge. Did you know that, that must be something New York? Is that in this state or New York State? Oh, just New York. Section 809 of the New York State Education Law. When did that come into existence, though? Four years ago. Okay, I was going to say. Oh, it's not recent. That. It's not recent. Did you say 40 years four ago or 40? 40. 40. Oh, oh, my God. It's been in existence wow. for a very long time. Sure. I've spoken so with you now. So this is something you guys can do. When I have students, I'll give them projects, and if they want, they can go into a classroom. And there are teachers who want you in those classrooms. You can do this. I want to have a student go into a classroom, a bunch of little second graders, with a piece of paper this big and say, this is what battery cages, this is how big they are. This is what the chickens are doing. And it was remarkable. You can do this. Humane education is mandated in New York State. Problem is, the teachers don't have the time, the, the resources to do it. Call your school and offer. I'm telling you guys, I'll work with you. It, it's, it's doable. And finally, uh, I'm just showing this plethora of of humanity and animals. Um, we all have a purpose. This may be yours. For me, my, my passion is absolutely animals. Um, Bob Barker, it's good to have money, but if you don't, you can still uh, write letters and do things, which I'm going to get to in just a second, and just reach inside of yourself because um, there's a good place in all of us. Um, now, um, I guess what I just, I, you know, what I've learned is you can't do everything. You have to find a balance. There are organizations that are. Um, are here locally. NYSHA is a big one, the Rensselaer County Humane Society. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to sell these to you, I'm just trying to say don't reinvent the wheel if there's an organization already in existence. Um, don't burn out, guys. Remember, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Um, never give up. Can you put Margaret Mead's statement back on? Sure. I think um, uh, the Humane, Rensselaer Humane Society just opened up a low-cost medical clinic. To mobile medical to the girls. They did. Yeah. Yes. They, they have a mobile clinic. It's on their Facebook page. Yep. Yeah. That's doing more than just spays and neuters, I believe. Uh, I believe they do spay, neuter, and vaccines. Okay. Okay. Now, one thing we could do, I'm just thinking. I could get into the cruelty, or we could stop here and I could come back. Yeah, and the children could do their thing. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> um, no, but 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 what I'd like, to, because she's I really, cool. she keeps. I, I would like to leave you though with some some key bills that have a chance of passing. I won't be back before the legislature. Uh, yeah. 
No, we want to hear the session. Yeah. So I can. Let's do the. Can I can do? I can hold off on the cruelty thing and give you guys a lesson in that at another time. No, we can do that also. Okay. We have. The, can we do it? After Absolutely. We have the smoothies? Absolutely. Are you sure you well, there's a few want things them? I want to talk about. Though. They can make the smoothies. Go ahead, girls. Mm -hmm. Do your thing. So whatever time I can come back or whatever, but whatever you guys want to do is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Why we continue moving forward by their making the smoothies? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested to know if anybody is aware that there is a landmark case being heard. It should have been heard today um, in front of the, I'm not sure if it's the Supreme Court, um, brought by an animal advocate group to release, or to change the status of two. The non-human uh, race project. Yes, the non-human race Stephen project. Yeah. 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 Do you know what happened with that today? Do you know? I don't know the outcome, but it's been looking sure. What's it about? What was it about? It is astounding. What is it about? What is it about? They're trying to make it, they're trying to grant rights to two chimpanzees that have been held in captivity for years. They're not being used for medicinal experiments anymore, but they are still in prison. And they're trying to give them human attributes in the long run to be able to free them, to say that the, that the place that has them does not have the right to keep them captive any longer. It's, it's huge if this works. Eh? Right. It's going to affect every animal in every laboratory, yeah. I think, yeah. in the United States. It's a matter of time. It's going to Are you ready? The tide is turning. It is. It's it's it is. It really Are you is. girls ready? All the, you know, I'll do it. How are you doing? Let us know when you're ready, ready okay? Wasn't, um, just, you know, because we just did the circus thing in Dalton, yes. wasn't Ringland's, like, their stance on why they um, no longer included elephants in their, because it was a traveling circus and they couldn't provide the proper conditions for the animals? Their um, peer pressure was that because many cities are now incorporating ordinances that would prevent circus elephants and cir wild animals in circuses, they didn't want to deal with trailing around and encountering all these different ordinances and laws. Oh, that That's what they said publicly. On. That's what they oh, said publicly. But they're still going to take the elephants and they're still going to make them perform down in Florida. After they retire they, them? Well, yeah, but they say that they're retiring them to their sanctuary down there. But the sanctuary was basically where they trained the elephants. That's where they brought them and they broke them and they did, you know, make them do what they they're them down there. So kind of taking these elephants and putting them back to where they got to use that is still going to be torturous to them and that they're expanding their facility that they're investing millions of dollars in it to expand it and it's basically going to be like from what i understand it's going to be like a sea world you know and there's the other elephant sanctuary which is down in tennessee which is an actual real sanctuary right. they offered to take their elephants but ringley said no of course profit Bottom line. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that piece. Yeah, so it's because still they you know the whitewash is they they are retiring them. That's you know to their Florida sanctuary. Right, right. And well, they'll probably still use them. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. It's still yeah. progress. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Well, it's, it's sending a message. Just, you know, choice, did you that is no longer acceptable to the public. And that, that was the big. That was a real issue, wasn't it? Yes, I is that the public yes, wasn't. Okay, I just wanted clarification around that since we just worked on that piece in Dalton. Mm -hmm. Small town politics. And <laughs> now, since you guys are from over the Berkshires, though, there was something recently too where they were supposed to show a movie. That was us. But they canceled the movie. Dalton. Right? Yeah, an apology to an elephant. Apology to elephants. Now, do you know about that, Val? Censorship. Why they cancel? Well, yeah, because while well, we were doing this a local. Because they wanted to. <laughs> censor, they censored at the Lions Club. Mm -hmm. so the the Lions Club, because they're the ones promoting the It's service. a fundraiser for oh. the uh, Lions Club, so we were um, going to show a screening of the uh, documentary film with Lily Tomlin called Apology to the Elephant. And uh, the uh, Lions Club uh, went to the library and Tell them that they thought it was sh the library was showing like big, not big, yeah, 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 yeah. like showing sides. That's wrong. Yeah, yeah. That's That's wrong. Totally Censorship. Right. No yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> what, what happened actually sort of backfired on them in that um, it was picked up by this local fellow who wrote a blog and really kind of really blew it apart. Exposed yeah. it. Yeah, Good. exposed it. So Good. it got really. But unfortunately, in that situation, we didn't get it passed because uh, we didn't have enough people come to vote. So that was the. 
mm. the challenge. Well, there was, a, there was a lot of misinformation. Well, we had the support. I, I yeah, we did have a lot of support, the support, but, but the pe getting people out to vote was a challenge. Okay. In that case, but there's still a lot of misinformation being given to the public, you know, like they put on there where they were sourcing from Feld Entertainment, and where they were getting their information in from uh, uh, Humane Watch and Consumer, you know, which is a, a PR front. Right. You know, that. Oh, yes, yes. That, so they were feeding the public all this, you know, and it sounds legitimate. So, you know, there's all this information we're up against, too. You know. So we're using it as a learning experience. Um, Hi. Hi there. Well, tonight we're doing movies, I guess. Quiet. I don't know if you guys are going to like these because they're probably going to turn out very much. Oh my goodness, ha there's a snow point. <laughs> have faith. Okay, um, we're making banana and strawberry, strawberry, blueberry and grape, and pear. Oh, that's oh, nice. That's great. Wow. I haven't um, heard a blender yet, though. Name and number. Are you guys funding this? Yes, why not? I'm trying. 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 I'
covered animal cruelty. That, that's getting a little light. And it's, it's like a, it's very intense. I think that I'd rather, if it's all right, will you guys just come back and do that. You want to do that? Well, we'll be here next month. Um, I, I mean, I could do, I could finish up both things in about half an hour, but I don't want people to be burnt out. So you tell me. I, it, it's a, I can we do can either. take it. Yeah, yeah, right. going. Yeah. All right. Well, then why don't I? I think we're burned out. Okay. 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 All right. I didn't know if it was overkill. Okay. No. Well, then, I, then I'm gonna we'll stick with the agenda then, and then when the kids are done, I can. Um, okay. So let's do this because I do think that this is very helpful. Okay. So animal cruelty investigation. Now this is somewhat what the police see. Um, when the New York State Humane Association does training, but I've obviously tailored it to citizens instead of cops. Um, so let's go through this and I'll just try to give you guys some tips on what to do and what, what the law is. Um, <clears throat> now in New York State, here's the problem. The agriculture and markets law where the cruelty law is. That's very rare. This is the only state in the country that that's the case. Most most states have their animal cruelty laws in the penal code or in the general statutes. Does anyone want to venture a guess why it's in the egg and markets law? It's because of the power of the Farm Bureau. Okay. In fact, when I get to the bills, they're holding up a lot of bills. I don't know if anybody's a member of the Farm Bureau, but um, it's a real it's a real issue in New York State in terms of protecting animals, passing legislation. <laughs> So, you know, there's a great link between being abused as a child, reacting by being violent, and um, and turning this into a way of life and criminals, um, possible future offenders. This is that petabuse.com database set um, that shows that it's an epidemic. You've got beating, bestiality, burning. I mean. The things people will do to animals, it's, it, we have got to step up and make the laws stronger. And people like yourself have got to be more vocal. Then this is good because you're learning about the issues here. This is not every case, obviously. This is only the ones that are reported and it gets wind of. Uh, I'm just all I'm doing here. I don't want to go through all these. You can read this yourself. The point is, is that we're in a violent society. We're in a violent freaking society, and it costs us a lot of money. <laughs> and what this is put together by Dr. Harry Hovel, who, who, who speaks to police about the very real societal impact financially of, of uh, not taking animal cruelty seriously. And it's all related. It's all related. So juvenile violence, we've got every year 4,000 kids under 18 committing murder in the United States. All, all of them began using animals. Are any of you in education? Okay. We need to, this is, this is really, and these are just our, our you've heard of a lot of these. These are the ones that um, have made headlines, Kip Kinkle, the, the uh, Columbine massacre, all of these, all of these people tortured animals and nobody paid attention to it. This is why it's good that the FBI is actually realizing that it's a big one. This estimate is, is just, you know, every serial killer on record began with torturing animals. Jeffrey Dahmer, um, the Boston Strangler, <coughs> Ed Kemper. Uh, Listen through that other guy recently down in New York City who was that rich real estate guy who was just charged with some crime, like a murder. I wish I could remember. Oh, yeah, his father. <laughs> he killed his father. I, I don't uh, know if it was that, but it, they talked about that he... Prior to doing the killing, he practiced on these dogs. Ah, so yes. Yeah, yeah. New York yeah. City. So now the FBI is catching on, and, and I, as I say, I've done this 15 years. This was unheard of 15 years ago. So we take heart in that there is progress. The connection is being made. Yep. Yeah, there's a, in our area, there's a group yep. called Haven. That's the human animal mm -hmm. violence. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really incredible. Network. So why bother? Uh, we've got felony misdemeanor crimes, other criminal activities usually associated concern for the animals. Here is something that the average citizen, this is something police don't even know. This is probably the most important slide on this entire PowerPoint, you guys. When you suspect animal cruelty, what do you hear? Who do people call usually? Animal control.
control. Yeah. Animal control. Cool animal control. Animal control has no legal authority to investigate animal cruelty cases. It is absolutely a mistake. Animal control can uh, investigate dogs that are not licensed, rabies, uh, running dogs running at large. But they are not empowered to enforce animal cruelty laws. It's the police in New York State. This is critical. I don't know how many times I see on a weekly basis animal cruelty cases out there on Facebook. Who am I going to call? Who am I? I'll call animal control. It's not animal control. They can't. All right? This is critical. And the reason the police don't know this is because the animal cruelty laws are in the agriculture and markets law. So when they go through the academy, and they get trained, they don't get trained in agriculture or markets law. Mm -hmm. They get trained in the penal code. What about what about the humane societies that have animal good, control Good point. Officers peace officers, officers, you can get peace officer status in New York State where you are empowered by a, a incorporated SPCA to have arrest powers. <coughs> okay. that's but, but that's, that's only one state, in every though, county. Right. Right. Okay, so it's not like Rensselaer County can't do that because the, the county who does no. The SPCA for Rensselaer County is still Mohawk Hudson. They have peace officers who can make arrests for animal crimes. Good question. All right, here's what's really important. Okay, here's, this is a hypertext link, and this will bring you right to the law. And I just want to show you this, because this is pretty cool. Um, this is the New York State Humane Association. They have taken the New York State animal cruelty law and put it on their website and they also put annotations and it's so slow it's not moving so yeah that's okay um, that's all right I, I have enough right here in the presentation you don't need to go there but that's the link to it um, article 26 defines every animal as every an, an animal is every living creature except a human being every every animal okay and this is really important legally when you're confronting animal cruelty cases, the definitions and the statutes. This is critical. It makes or breaks a case. Um, torture is any act, omission, neglect where unjustifiable suffering is caused. That is a very, it's a brilliant definition. A lot can come under this, okay? So not providing vet care and the, the animal is, is suffering as a result. That's technically can be considered cruelty. So I just want you to be aware of the definitions, and they're all in your handout. You should have the New York State um, cruelty key provisions, and th th there are many more provisions than this. But this is just for the, the person uh, like yourself who, who might want to call a cop and say, "Hey, I'm concerned about these horses. This law says this. Can you do? Will you do something?" Not providing veterinarian care is, is depending on the case. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. It should be. Because because it's neglect. Uh, now if it's now that would depend on the case. If you have to spend I know, $4, I'm just thinking of all the people that can't afford to take care of them, and, and you know, I, I wonder how they. I know. Sort that out. That's a case by case analysis. It really is. Um, Felony and misdemeanor. This is the biggest section, guys. And basically, this was written in 1867 for farm animals. But what it does say is that you under, unjustifiably injure a wild or tame. It could be a raccoon, wild, anything. Um, it's a misdemeanor if if you torture, cruelly beat, unjustifiably injure, or in any way any act of cruelty. So this is very broad, and it covers wild or uh, domestic animals, and it's a misdemeanor. You rarely see this prosecuted, though. The only one I can recall recently was the turtle case a few years ago, where some boys blew up a, a turtle. And it was a horrible thing, but it was only prosecuted as a misdemeanor because wild animals are not covered under the felony cruelty law in New York State. Okay? So that's a bill that we would like to see changed. Some other important definitions. In this case, this was a misdemeanor. It should be a felony. This is a misdemeanor. Okay? Failure to provide sustenance. Misdemeanor. Um, any omission or neglect, leaving a dog in hot cars, overgrown hooves that you might see, embedded collars, people get a puppy, they forget to let them loose in the collar as it grows, we've seen it. Um, lack of vet care re resulting in suffering. My, my cats are due for their vaccines, I'm not going to get arrested. Okay. All right. um, hoofs, overgrown hoofs, technically this is a misdemeanor. 
what, what cops will do is they'll go, they'll say, okay, get this taken care of. We'll be back in a week. They get it taken care of, case closed. That's how it should, and that's fine. That's fine. You don't need to haul someone into jail. If they come back and this is not taken care of, then you got an issue, okay? And this is important for Nassau and rural areas. If you don't get your rabies shot, you could actually be in violation of the law. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But not for like I think it's distemper. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, it's... Do you know yeah. whatever happened to that farmer up in Boston, uh, where was it, Burke Hills? The one, you know, the family farmer who got arrested for neglect of his animals over the winter? I, and then they had the court case up in Scotia, and they had a whole bunch of other farmers there. Oh, yeah, right, 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 yeah, right, right. That. I don't think it's been adjudicated. I have yet. not. I don't think it has. Yep, I think you're right. I don't think it has been. Uh, it's pending. Um, all right, so other th situations that are, are very common, um, animal hoarders. Um, it's a person who can't care for the amount of animals. They may not even realize it, okay? <coughs> um, and these are some examples. And these are real cases the New York State Humane Association is on on. Uh, this is pretty extreme, um, but this is against the law. This is a misdemeanor. Uh, can I ask a question? I'm sure, just kind of stuck do. on the uh, one about wild and domesticated animals mm -hmm. that being a, a, a misdemeanor. And, you if know, you mutilating, a wild killing, animal. or anything like that is, but what about hunters? I mean, they yeah. kill. That's exempt. That's a wild from, animal. I mean, that's, that's going to be a no, huge. It's, it's exempt from the cruelty law. You'll see that. And you'll see that. Hunting is an exception, as are scientific experiments. Mm. Animal lives don't matter. They're lesser beings. As long as you're following and, and, and laws. The hunter lobby is very powerful in New York State as well. So that's not going to change anything. <clears throat> uh, you've got fire hazards. You've got, this is pretty extreme, but you've got, um, this is a case in Rensselaer County about 10 years ago. Very real. Um, you've got, in this case, an animal living in these conditions could be taken out uh, because it's an unsanitary situation. Um, you would call the police. If any of you are ever aware of a situation like this and you have first hand knowledge, you call the police and you say, I have, I'd like to make a complaint. And you tell them what you, you've seen. You have first hand knowledge. They're not going to want to hear that my mother told me. Mom, mom doesn't want, Now I hear this a lot, someone is aware of cruelty going on but doesn't want to speak to anyone about it, doesn't want to get involved, then you can't help. You have to have first-hand knowledge and you go to the police and, and you tell them what you've seen. In this case, the animals could be taken out because it's 12 hours or more in unsanitary conditions, which I'll get to. Um, but my point is, is, is call, please don't look the other way. Um, puppy mills, um, you, you probably know about this, but if you if you buy from a pet store, you're su you're supporting puppy mills. How can puppy mills be be not illegal? I mean, the the definition. I mean, the if you look at a puppy mill, the way that they're housed, the filth that they live in, what they've the done, un, not being vetted. Right. How can that not that be it, illegal? It, it is illegal, but they don't have a, a law against puppy mills. This is where the language. Of, this is where the language of the statute is really important. Animals that are neglected. All those things you just said are misdemeanors. Okay, but puppy mill, and, and so that's why this is this was a misdemeanor. Every one count for each animal. Puppy mills. I, I hear what you're saying. Why did why do they exist? Yeah. Well, because in some cases, illegal, and and I've yet to see a puppy mill that has not been horrific. I mean, not that I've seen them with my own eyes, but investigative reporters. Exactly. <laughs> um, Even if ninety-five percent are, why aren't that ninety-five percent shut down? Every day, they should be shutting puppy mills down and arresting. They should be. Um, Believe it or not, in some states, and in Western New York State, you've got a lot of people who say this is their business. And legislators, I hate to sound negative, but one of the things I've learned is legislators are bored. So, so they really are, especially in Western New York State when it comes to public. Except that I was, that yeah. I was trying to get a The law is on the books already, and it's already a misdemeanor. Right. Why aren't they making arrests every single day? Correct. I and, and I agree with you. And it's about priorities. And that's a very good question because it is against the law. It is against the law. These conditions are against the law. Um, 
resources, the amount of police, uh, the, the, the types of crimes that they have to deal with. And often the police will say, go to your animal control. It, it's crazy because the police don't even know if there's a distance. But you hit on a very important point. Um, Buster's Law, this is, fel this is felony aggravated cruelty, guys, and what this is, is this started uh, after Buster the Tabby Cat in Schenectady was um, doused with kerosene in 1997 and, and died as a result. It was intentional at the time, that was only a misdemeanor. His owner, um, Nancy Bonesteel, um, got out, pounded the pavement, got signatures to create a felony animal cruelty law in New York State. At that time, there were only 17 felony animal cruelty laws in the United States. Now, every state has a felony animal cruelty law. That was the beginning, Buster's Law, in this country. That, that case, that little cat, Buster, made national news. Um, so what that is, is you have to intentionally kill or cause serious injury and it has to be intended to cause extreme pain and done in a depraved or sadistic manner. So that's a, that's a pretty heavy set of uh, requirements, okay? I'm not going to show you pictures of felony animal cruelty. It's bad. They're right here. And we've got a break here. Okay. So a starved horse that goes, that is starved slowly to death. I, you, you, you are so insightful. You're, you're talking like we do on our, our emails to each other. Where do you cross the line between How can that intentional be depraved? depraved? I completely agree with you. They should all be felonies. I completely, <laughs> you know, but, but this is where it, it's very difficult to fulfill those requirements. But you're so, you got it. Now, so, And also there's the lobbyist. You yeah. Know. Well, the special Farm Bureau, interest are. the Farm Bureau says, I don't want you to tell me how to handle my horses. I don't want you to tell me how to handle my cows. And they, they put, they've got the votes, but so did the animal people. That's what we have to realize. There are more animal people than there is, but the Farm Bureau is better organized in New York State in terms of a lobbying entity. Right. I see that with a couple of their laws recently that they're kind of changing the language and they're saying like family farms. Well, they're trying, and, and, and you know, it, it's better than a factory farm, but um, well, yeah, but they do, they change the definition, how, just like. Well, they're just saying they're, they're addressing the farms as family farms. Right, yeah, just like so. they call um, irradiation. Okay. Now it's called cold pasteurization, so the public doesn't know. It's a whitewash, or they yeah, rework, is. redefine, this is you know, minimize. This is important for upstate New York. This is the dog shelter law. This applies to both heat and cold. And this is a very important law that is written. You've got the text of it. Go ahead. Sorry. We'll finish your sentence. I think Lily wants to tell people what's in her. Oh, okay, honey. Oh, this one <laughs> was mostly strawberries and bananas, but there was also a little bit of blueberry in there. Mm -hmm. And the next one's I think, is just going to be all blueberry. This one's good. Okay. So the dog shelter law, this is important. Um, it, it's a violation. It's not a misdemeanor to have inadequate dog shelter, but this is something that you'll uh, no doubt encounter in upstate New York. And the law is written so that um, I've got this, the, the key points here. The law is written so that they take into account waste, that the shelter needs to be kept clean, weather conditions. So the law is different for a Siberian Husky as opposed to a, thin, a skinny boxer. The, condu the uh, uh, requirements differ, but it's 353B, and it is a violation to have inadequate shelter. And what's interesting is that once this is reported and a, a, an individual who's providing inadequate shelter is, is made aware that they're being... Um, approached about this, the, the police, and actually dog control can do this too. But once that happens, after, after um, 72 hours, after three days after a charge, if the defendant, the person with the inadequate shelter fails to correct the deficiency, each day um, is, is a separate offense. So that's very interesting. Water in here. That's so if you, listen, if you, if you feel that you're aware of an inadequate dog shelter, feel free to change the video. Um, this is all blueberry. It's like that's a shake, right? Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Here we go. You did a great job. <laughs> Who's 
Whose idea was it? Who started it? Uh, me. You started? I just brought yeah. the stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I like, in the beginning. Oh, this is terrific. I think you did a great job. <laughs> no, like, last vegetarian <laughs> club that me and Katie went to, well, that game, we thought of the idea to, okay, we thought of the idea to actually do smoothies. So it was last vegetarian club when we thought of this. And what did you do at your meeting? You were going to have a meeting? Yeah, we were discussing what like kind of flavors we wanted. We did, we did bananas and strawberries. We did bananas, strawberries, and blueberries. And now we're doing all blueberry. All blueberry? Mm-hmm. Oh, goody. Yeah. Are you running out of cups? or? Uh-uh, no. We had a lot of cups. Oh, good. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you're Katie, and you're Lily, and I'm you're Katie. <laughs> Katie and Katie. Oh, my two Katies? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is fun. <laughs> Who's going to be Katie one and Katie two? Back. Call one. I'll call two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Consider you were born first. Yes. Oh. come into the 21st century. No. <laughs> There's an app out there, it's called New York State Animal Law, so anytime you need to learn anything, you know, just kind of pull that up. Tony, that's awesome. Now, one other thing, since I got a quick break here, there's another app out there, and this is also good for you guys in Massachusetts, it's called Animal Health Now. Animal Health Now. Yeah, so it's like if you um, come across like a wild animal or something that's in need of assistance, you just kind of pop it in there and it centers in on your location and it gives you a list of rehabbers in the area that you can call up. And what is, okay, is that just pertain to wild, um, non-domesticated wild animals? Wild animals. Okay, thank you. Okay. Alright, moving along, quickly animal fighting, it's rampant in the Troy, Schenectady, Albany area. We've got it here badly. I'm not going to show you gruesome pictures, but I'm going to show you what to notice. Because it's, pre it's happening everywhere. It's happening in the rural areas. Um, so this is what you need to look at. Um, obviously, this is how the, the cops might, might uncover it. But you guys, as neighbors out there, first of all, if you ever see a dog on a chain like this, that's overloading for one thing, but that's how animal fighters strengthen their dog's neck muscles. So that's, that's a sign. Be aware, okay? Call the cops. Call me. I'll help you. Um, <clears throat> All right, heavy chains to strengthen neck muscles. Another one. This is a um, spring pole. We have the dogs jump up. They often give them drugs, um, cocaine, um, gasoline, all kinds of stuff to make them vicious, to um, to make them want to train. Um, spring poles. If you're ever in a, if you're ever in a house and you see something like this, there's something wrong. Okay, that's a spring pole. That's again for strengthening dogs' neck muscles. This is blood on the treadmill. They'll run the dog. This is from uh, Frickione. He was an animal fighter. This was from a seizure. Dog Sporting Journal. That's a dog fighting magazine. Drugs, veterinary drugs. They'll also have, um, uh, they rehydrate the dog's bodies after activity. They also practice veterinary medicine. They shouldn't be, but after a dog fight, you're not going to bring a dog to the vet. they magazine, where is it? That they can publish a magazine that is out of business now as a result of this seizure. First Amendment says you can publish a magazine like that. But, but that's yeah, true. true. That, that, times. that is true. I think, I think Sporting Dog Journal went under, though, I think. I'm not positive. Um, so, breaking sticks for breaking up fights. This is again for neck muscles, and this is an actual seizure. They electrocute the dead dogs, or the, the dogs that don't perform. So this is the kind of thing that you may see, and if you do, call the cops, because it's a felony. And there's a $5,000 reward for any time that's That's right. Dog fighting, yep. and that is a humane society in the United States. $5,000. That's correct. Who provides that money? The Humane Society of the United States. The Humane Society of the United States, which is a private organization, and, you know, they're, they're so um, dedicated to this that they've got that reward. These are the kind of setups that you see that often indicate we got a problem. Um, all right. So and you know you've got you've got organized dog fighting right down to street fighting. It's I can't say enough about how pervasive this epidemic is, and it's uh, it's a way that kids make money. It's a way. Oh, it's it's money making. You can they bet on it. Bet twenty five thousand dollars for a champion bred bull. 
And they, they are money-making machines for these people that will put them to death if they don't perform. Finally, guys, if you hear of somebody who abandoned their dog or abandoned their cat, left the apartment, this is a misdemeanor. I hear about this a lot. A lady moved out, left her cat, call the cops if you have first-hand knowledge of this. This is a misdemeanor to abandon a companion animal. Are you done with okay? Yes. That's Thank another you. important law for you guys. All right? Okay. I'm, I'm kind of just moving quickly. We're good. We're good. All right. Um, and then, um, yeah, so if somebody, this is just a, a real cat, selling diseased animals is a misdemeanor. That gets, brings us into the puppy lemon law. That's a whole other presentation with general sales law, but it is a misdemeanor. Um, and if you're in the, the one of those situations, feel free to call me and I will help you with that. But it is a misdemeanor to sell a diseased animal. Pet stores, breeders, private individuals. Um, oh, Lily? Hold on. She can keep going. I'm almost done. Um, so yeah, you can seize an animal. The cops can seize an animal 12 hours if it's been in crowded. So that um, hoarding situation was an example. <laughs> But they need um, they need firsthand knowledge, the witness, and they would have a search warrant executed. Um, and what's really interesting is ev people can assist with seizures. I didn't know this when I got started, but like you have a major seizure where 40 animals are being seized or something. The cops can have just private individuals and at rescues help out. You'll see them at these seizures. Okay. Um, Photograph. This is some for the cops. That was for Keon's case. And then the last thing I just want to mention is that, say you've got a seizure of 40 animals, right? Where are you going to put all these animals? That's a big problem. What you can do, what the cops can do, and what you can tell cops, they don't know this, is that a court order can be obtained to keep the animals on the property but to go back periodically to check on their condition. So they're, they're still under arrest and they have effectively taken possession of the animals, but they're still on the property being cared for by an SPCA, okay? The, the, in a seizure, there's always a lead SPCA, a lead uh, humane society that will take the charge of spearheading it through the courts and um, so, but you can seize animals on the property if there's no room for them in a shelter. Okay, we'll get, you know. Situations will come up, feel free to call me. So then just think outside the box because when there's crimes on animals, there's there's going to be um, other kinds of crimes. All right. And that's it. Um, okay. Oh. Yeah. I'm a firm believer in education. We taught the kids when they were young about all this. Is that how our society? Of course it would. I'm Why hoping to see this. Doing it? it would help. I, I taught a bunch of fifth graders today, Hudson Valley, who came in. They're so much more receptive than students once they get to college. It's, it, they're, they are a hope. And yes, it has to happen at a lower grade level than college. It will happen. It has to. They're more receptive in your experience, fifth graders and college students? I, I, I would say so, yes. Much more respectful and more receptive. I mean, there's absorb more. They do. They're, they're more, more impressionable. Sensitive. They have not formed opinions so they're much. More open. And so that's the time to get to them. Mm -hmm. And just oh. lastly, there are just a couple of bills that might pass. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to star the bills that we have. Um, there are a lot of bills that are going before the New York State um, Legislature right now. But because we're at the end of the session, and this is top priority bills, so everybody should have the yeah. handout. Okay. I have to, I have to speak there are really only two that stand a chance of passing Hold right on, now. Bill. You got to say something, Will? Oh, yeah. So I, I, I'm okay. really. Okay. okay. Say something? Sorry. I have to commit a crime. I broke the blender. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it's With still blends. <laughs> but who wants to learn? How about our speaker? Where did this start? Uh, where did this idea well, start? Well, last vegetarian club, we had like slushy drink things. So then I came up with the idea of making slushies. Or not slushies, yeah, uh, smoothies. Like, oh. <laughs> you need a Nutri Bullet. Okay. Yeah. Nutri -bullet. They'll blast them. Is there any more or not? Yeah. 
Lily and the well, children. Well, How about our speaker? Did you get one? Good job, girls. Good job. I love some, sweetie. Thank you. Let's see. Go back to Valerie. Well, now I'm totally doing away with the last PowerPoint. I'm just cutting right to the chase here. Um, all right. There, every year, like about a thousand animal-related bills get proposed in New York State. Okay, it'd be great if they all pass, but they don't. So we're lucky if we get one. Okay, we're right about at the end of the legislative session right now, and a couple of bills have been identified as actually possibly passing. So I've, I've passed this out to you guys. I've got mine highlighted in yellow big time. But where it says NYSHA's top priority bills, the first two, um, if you want a handout, I, I'm happy to give it to it's you. It's not in the packet? Yeah, it's in the yeah, packet. Yep. And so you should all have this handout. The first two, which would promote better training for police officers. It would keep the animal cruelty laws in the agriculture markets law, which we don't want. But in the alternative, it would promote training. We went to a, a, a budget session and asked for five million dollars to do this. New York State's got the money and they actually initiated a bill because of that because they don't want to take the, bill, the, the laws out of the penal, out of the agriculture markets law because of the farm bill. This one actually has a it's chance of passing, guys. So that means they can, they're in a better position to enforce. Yes. So that Bunch was trained. Like, cops would get better trained. No one likes it. Would it change the <laughs> no one likes the it. level of whatever the offense was to go no. on the penal code? No. So then who cares if it stays well, in the penal code? Well, because, because, because cops are trained in the penal code. No, so, I understand, but yeah. if they're going to train the cops in eggs and markets. Right. So it, this is a good compromise. Good question. Uh, all right, guys. And, and the, the other one that stands a chance of passing is the uh, second one down, the Retired Race Horsing Commission. This would actually... Um, it would uh, it would oversee the retirement of racehorses and and create um, it would it would basically protect them when they leave the track so they're not sent to slaughter accountability yes so the first two stand a chance but here we are at this point uh, the session ends in three weeks so if you're interested in doing something to call to push these bills along. Um, the people to call, you've all got this handout, who are you going to call? I'm going to I'm going to star the names and just if you want to call them, it's the first one, Speaker, Speaker Hesty, you would call four people on this list, Speaker Hesty, Assemblyman Gary Pretlow, Assemblyman Bill McGee, and the Senate Majority Leader Flanagan, and just simply say to them that the bill should be acted upon before session ends June 17th. These guys have the power to move this along. We're that late in the session. Would you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Yeah. Certainly. What the were. name of the bill? Yes. Yes. Um, the, the first two bills. Yep. You're going to call these names that I'm going to tell you in a second and ask them to move these two top bills along, okay? And the four people, the, the, the key people is the Speaker of the Assembly, Carl Heasty. He'd be the first one. He's the top of the list. Who are you going to call? Bottom of the list on the first page, Senate Majority Leader Flanagan. Call him because he can get the bill acted upon, those two. Then the other two are Pretlow and McGee. The, they're third and fourth down on the list. Those are sponsors of the bills, and we move them along. But if you're only going to make a couple calls, call the assembly speaker of the House and the Senate. Oh, uh, thank you, sweetie. So, you're not going to like it. That's, that's it in a nutshell, guys. Um, we could go on for a whole semester. I really appreciate your time tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.
She broke the blender, so it's not fully the whole pack. Yeah. That's amazing. What do you want to do next? What's in it? Blueberries? Yeah. There's no way it's that good. I'm Joyce. Oh, Joyce. And our presenter's name is Joyce. Oh, and it's on the bottom. Joyce, thank you. I was talking about that. Okay. I know she gave me your name. You know, when she started this. It's a trail. Yeah. You come down 20. We did. Yeah. So it was a straight shot, which was great. During the horrific thunderstorm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So, Valerie, would you consider um, maybe relocating <laughs> to Massachusetts? Let's <laughs> speak if you ever want. I just live. I just live practically on the border myself. I would, I would have a Oh, wonderful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, please stay in touch. Yeah. Please. Or just or just me. Oh, put oh, my name and number. Please. Um, so, this is my contact yeah. info right there. Uh, I think I got it right here. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, this is what I'm going to do. And she just said to be in your Dharma. Well, let me, let me help. You know what I mean? I'm here. I'll drive. I'll do it. I think that's red beans and that's black. Very inspiring. You too. Yeah. You too. For the creatures. They need us. You know? What's your name? Karen. Yeah. Karen. Yeah. How's it spelled? Yeah. Oh, Karen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
We just, um, I don't know if you're Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Here, there. Can I assist? No, we're done. Oh, that's good. Good timing. Uh, I offer to assist when you're all done. <laughs> Better that than <laughs> That's looking for positive aspects. Thank you. Oh, is this being filmed? Looks like it. I'm in tandem with Sri Lanka. So. Pardon me? Oh, so June 24th. Okay, what time? Yes. Six, here. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You got your voice. Yeah, no, don't get discouraged. I know it is. I know I'm less effective if I get to I have to take time out, but I'm just like getting a good education. I get online and sign all the petitions I possibly can. You know, and just what town do you live in? Actually Pittsfield. And what town does she live in? Pittsfield. Pittsfield. How's it going over there with the carousel? Oh, that's a good question. I love that. Yeah. You know, I, I don't I'm know. I'm related to those people. Yeah. You are? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I can't get in touch with them. My lady is over there. Anyway, 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 anyway. And Jim Schulman's writing a book coming out in June. All Pittsfield memories. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to read. You get it. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, I can't wait to see the carousel. Now, the hook is going to be in Dalton, isn't it? I'm going. Dalton, they're out of the grocery They moved out of Dalton. They got a new, they got a place in Pittsfield now. Oh, on West West Street, I think. That's not for I can yeah, I can call you and give you their numbers and you find all out about it. Oh, she's just going out the book show. Oh, and I'm in the book because yes. my first T V show was in Pittsfield. This much yeah. 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 And I'll tell you all about it. Yeah, no, your name is Glendora. Yeah, I gave you my flyer. I gave you my flyer. Wait a minute. It was a little flyer. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Oh good. Yeah. That's Thank you. Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. I'm so glad you came out to hear about it. She, she called me today and asked me if I could come tonight. And I was like, well, I'm not sure. And then I called her back at 5.30. She's on her way. And I said, yes, yes, I can come. Oh, good, good, good. So she picked me up. It's always fun. Where's your people? 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 I am. Where's my big man? Oh, 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 Lily was terrific. Lily was terrific. Oh, she was terrific. And then good speeches. I'm going to Harvard and Harvard. 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 I'm going to Harvard and <laughs> the girls are wonderful. What's that? The girls. Hey, I had no, I had no idea they were going to do this. It was great. That's so sweet. He was so cute. Yeah, they have so much passion and aliveness and joy. They yeah, they do. bring out the joy in others. Yeah, they do. And you know, that's our future. Absolutely, yes. That's our future. That's for sure. I'm so glad you came. So try to come next time. Okay. Every 20 Fourth at six. Yep. Is that on a Wednesday? Or? Always a Wednesday. Okay. Always the last Wednesday. And this is with the a coalition you all are with a coalition of animal rights advocates. What are we? Um, a coalition of animal rights so advocates. No, we're a vegetarian club. Oh, are you? Okay. We're the Glendora Vegetarian um, Club. Okay. But you support animal rights. Oh, sure. Oh. <laughs> and, and the planet. Oh, what? Well, yes. They go hand in hand. Yes. I'm glad they got along. Oh, well. Bye, Glendora TV. Bye.
You know what? I don't even know how she's getting home. Yeah, I don't know either. At the Scram Center in Delaware. I don't know how she's getting home. Well, Pat Sars brought her, but I haven't seen Pat. Okay. 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 Okay
just the simple basic. Okay, Glendora, no. Tony is um, Don't already... you let me that. You take No, no, that. I'll take that. You take that home. Oh, well, how come I, that was in your laundry? Huh? It was in your laundry? Yeah. <laughs> it's because I saw those poor threadbare ones you had. I was giving you one. Did you make out okay with the puppy? Yes, she did. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Yeah, let me see. I'll show you something real quick. God bless you. I was trying to do it as a demonstration of how simple it can be and inexpensive. You've got candy and a few flavorings. Okay, I'll make it as big as I can. That's the woman that I turned her over to. I didn't make it. God bless you both. Her name is Barbara. The dog's name is Ivy. She was delightful. Doesn't, is she a wonderful woman? Yes. She runs a group called Eleventh Hour Eleventh Hour Rescue. Darling little dog. She is adorable. Look at the dog. I know. Good thing I didn't keep her overnight. I'd have never been able to give her up. She was uh, well, so Well, I sweet. can't do that either. Uh, if, so I'd, if I'd seen her, I wouldn't be able to do it. So anyhow, it was a long day and a long ride, and but worth it. This worth is yours, it. Glendora, right? No. Yes. Your brace, beans, yeah. and beans. Glendora, I'll talk to you later, yeah. okay? Yeah. So it'll be nice seeing you again. Yes, nice. And your truck is where? Up and up, right? Okay, the party's over. Let's call it a day.